pick up where we left off last time and review what we talked about links because we kind of rushed that in the last minute or so of class and so I want to make sure that we understand it. So we're going to review links in a little more detail and then we're going to look at different kinds of links because you can link to you know several different things um, other than <coughs> what the kind of link that we did last time. So we'll expand on that. Uh, and we'll get into the main sections of pages and we might start talking about CSS uh, and anything we don't do today we'll pick up on Thursday. So this is where we left off last time. I added a link, at least one link to the web page that we've been working on. Again, I expanded the zip folder. I'm not sure. No, you can't see it yet. Remember, if you download one of my examples, you need to expand the zip folder in order to see the files inside it properly. All right. If we open this up, we have one of the things on a page was... Um, I thought it was a link. Oh, I, I made a change and didn't change it back. I showed a mistake. Okay, that's right. And we worried for a second. Yeah, what I showed is you have to have something between the start and end link. The start and end tag for the link. Remember, a link has three parts. And again, I'm going to put them on three different lines just because that's my choice. You certainly don't have to do that. You do whatever that's, you think is going to make the page more readable. But since I'm emphasizing the three different parts of a link, we're going to put each of them on its own line. You have the starting tag. You have the text for the link. And the text for the link is the thing that the person's actually going to click on. And again, you need something there. If you have nothing there, you get what I just got a second ago, where the link is there, kind of, but no place to click on, all right? So it really doesn't do you any good. So you need there to be some text between the starting tag and the ending tag. And that will be the text that becomes the text for the link. That is, that will be the text that you click on to access that link. So now I'm going to save it and hit refresh. And there the text is Cleveland State. So if I click on it then, I go to Cleveland State's homepage. All right. I then have an ending A tag. What do you think would happen if I forgot the ending A tag? The link would... Uh take up all the rest of the space, Yeah, the right? entire rest of the page would be a link because the browser wouldn't know where the end of the link was. Yes? Is that good, like, etiquette to have the beginning and end tag on, like, separate lines like that and text in between? Or, you know? uh, it's entirely what you think makes it more readable. Okay. So it's really up to you. Um, there isn't any, like, hard and fast rules. I think it's a good idea to indent your code like this. Right. Uh, for something like this, I was showing the three parts of the link, so I deliberately put it on three lines, but it's also pretty clear if you put it on just one line, so that's really, that's really your choice. Now, if you notice, the A tag, the starting tag, has a little bit of extra information on it compared to the other tags. All the other starting tags are just the tag itself, like P, that's a paragraph. OL, that's an ordered list. LI, that's a list item, and so forth. The link is a little different in that there's an extra piece of information about it. Because remember, it's not enough to say I have a link. We have to say a link to what? And that's where the href comes in. So your links are going to have, almost 100% of the time, are going to have href attributes. That extra piece of information is called an attribute. All right, It's additional information about the link. A link, okay, that's a link. A link to what? The A attribute says what it's a link to. 
notice that it's part of the starting tag. So we have the left bracket, the A, and we don't immediately close the A bracket. We close the A bracket over here. So this finishes the starting tag over here. All the attributes are going to look like this. They're going to have the name of the attribute for links. The attribute we're going to use most often is href. We then have an equal sign. And then we have enclosed in quotation marks the value of the attribute. So all the attributes we have are going to look like that. We're going to have the name of the attribute, an equal sign, and then in quotes we're going to have the value of the attribute. And again, just consider it additional information. It's a link, but that's not enough. We need the additional information of what it is a link to. So it's a link to that particular web page. Questions about that? You can also create a link within your web page. You often see this in things like frequently asked questions or telephone directories online where you have a list of links on the top of the page and they don't load up a new page but they jump to a spot on your current page. We're going to look at how you make that kind of link now. <coughs> what I'm going to want is I'm going to want to link to This story, this story, this story, and this story, and this story. So I'm going to want to link to each of those sections. Maybe I'll only, uh, maybe I'll only do a few of them. Maybe I'll only do conference standings, men's basketball, and spring semester. So this is going to be an unordered list because I could put these in any order. They don't have to be in this order. So I'm going to make an unordered list with list items. And each of the list items is going to be a link. But this is a different kind of link. I don't want to go to another page. I want to go to a spot on my page. All right. So I'm going to say a href equals and I'm not going to put in the full address of the web page. See what I have here? I have http colon slash slash www.csu.edu. That's the full address of that web page. Instead, I'm going to put in the pound sign. And I'm going to put in a name for that section of the page. And I'll do it with just this one to start, so I can show you the whole thing, and then we'll do it for the other ones, too. Now, what does pound sign standings mean? We have to define that, right? Right now, if we'd use this link, it wouldn't work. What standings is, is it's going to be the another attribute of this H2, and that's going to be the ID attribute. We can give an ID to different things on our page. It's like giving different tags on our page a name. All right? We're going to call this tag standings. It's an ID. It's like you have a student ID number, right? And your car has a license plate number. That identifies you. All right? If you go over to student services, the first thing they're probably going to ask you is what's your student number? So they want to know that they're, they're dealing with you and your information. All right? Now, what's true about your student number? No two people can have the same student ID number, right? It would be pretty useless if, if there were duplicates, right? Because then how would they know who was taking what classes and who to send the bill to and who gets a degree and so on? So ID numbers are unique, just like with uh, driver's, uh, driver's license numbers or license plate numbers, right? There's no one else in Ohio that has the same license plate as you do. All right, on your car. It identifies you. That's what it means to identify someone, is to, to say that 
this car belongs to this person, not this car could be belong to this person or could belong to some other person. So the way this link works is if we say a href equals pound sign standings, the browser knows that by the pound sign, we're looking for something on this page. We're not looking for another website. We're looking for something on this page. All right? The pound sign has to be inside the quotation marks. Pound sign has to be inside the quotation marks, exactly. And what is it looking for on the page? It's looking for the thing that has an ID of standings. So pound sign means it's looking for a specific ID on the page. Pound sign means ID. All right. So let's look at how this works. Oops. All right, let's say this is our browser window, and we're looking at this. If I click the jump to standings, what's going to happen is I'm going to jump to that part of the page, and that part of the page will become visible. It's more obvious if the screen is, if the window is smaller. So if I click jump to standings, boom, it's going to bring me the standings to the top of the page. So does that bring you to the line or to the text? Brings you to this so tag. Since it's in the H2, it will bring you to that whole like heading? It will bring you to that heading, right. All right. So I can use that to jump around and to navigate around the page. That way the user, if the user came to this page and they weren't interested in all the other stuff, but they just wanted to see the basketball standings, they could click that link and go directly to it. Where I've seen this used quite a bit is with frequently asked, asked questions. With frequently asked questions, you might have a list of 10 or 20 questions on the top of the page. If you click one, you'll jump right to the answer to that question. You don't have to scroll through all the other answers. Or well, I've also seen it for a phone directory by department or alphabetical order. You click the S, it takes you to the people whose names start with S. All right? So I can do this with every section of the page that I want to make a link for. But I have to give each one an ID. So I'll give this one an ID. And again, this is also an attribute. And then I can make links to each of those. It's a link, so it has the three parts, right? It has the A tag with the href. It has the text that you're going to click on, and it has the ending tag. Now, notice that it has an attribute just like the other link that we saw had. The only difference is the attribute is not an address of a web page. The attribute is an ID. It's a section of this page. So if I save this then... So imagine the window was smaller. If I click jump to spring, boom, it takes me, oh, I forgot to change this one. If it says jump to spring, boom, I go to that section. If it says jump to basketball, boom, I go to that section. If I say jump to standings, it takes me to that section. All right. There's a special tag we can use to get back to the top of the page. And we don't have to create an ID for that. We just make a link to the pound sign. So I could put here, I could put after every article,
and I could make a link to the back to the top of the page and that's what it would look like. So I don't have to create a, a special ID or anything. The browser knows that pound sign simply means the top of the page. So from here I could jump to the standings, I could look at the standings, I could click back to top, and I'm taken to the very top of the page. Are there any other places you can use the ID feature? Like yes. The ID feature is used, there's several different things that we can use the ID for besides this. One of the things that we can use the ID uh, feature for is we can use it within uh, for cascade styling, uh, style sheets. We can point and say this particular section, I want to make it look a certain way. And we can put in the code to make it look different than everything else on the page. We can also use uh, the ID when we do JavaScript code. Um, the ID, in short, is, is whenever we want to point to one specific thing on the page and do something with it, whether it be a link like this or JavaScript or cascading style sheets. So yes, you can, you can do that. Other questions about this? Yes? The text uh, on these links, the text after the, uh, the reference is just for your own, for your own notes or something like that? Which, which text? The back to top, the... Uh, no, that, that's actually... Basketball. No, that's actually what the, the user is going to see this link that says back to top, right? So if we look at this, or if we look at any of these, this text is what appears, and that's what the user is going to click on for the link. So if we look at this, if we go to the top, it says jump to spring. That matches that tag there, all right? So when we click on that, it's going to go to the thing on the page that has an ID of spring, which is this thing down here. But yeah, you need text for a link. Without text for a link, there's nothing for the user to click on. And therefore, you, they can't access that link. So we looked at two different kinds of links. One is to click to someone else's web page. That's this kind of link here. All links that we're going to look at today are the same except for one thing. And that is what the href is. All right. In this case, we're going to someone else's web page. We have to put in the address of that web page, including the HTTP and the colon and the slash slash. All right. That really is the full web page. And again, we can get that easily if we go to a web page. Let's do... Let's go to our own web page. All right. If we go here and click and copy this, we can then easily make our link and go a href equals paste, close the start tag, then put in the ending tag. All right. So that's to go to some other web page. And I'm saying someone else's web page, a web page that you didn't write. All right. That's the command for it. You have to give the name of the server where it lives and any other information about the address. And you can get that usually simply by copying uh, what's in the address bar. A link to a certain section of your page, you give that section of the page an ID, and then you create the link, except the href has then pound sign in the name of the ID that you gave. So in this case, to jump way down to the bottom for standings, I gave that section an ID of standings, and my link says pound sign standings. That says go to the section of this page, not some other page, or not someone else's page, but go to that section that says standings. Yes? Um, I noticed for like, uh, when you have the back of the top down there at the bottom, mm -hmm. um, 
you don't have that you don't you don't have to have that inside like a P tag or anything? Um I didn't put it inside a P tag, yeah. Okay. It would have just worked the same if it was. Yes. Yeah, we could put it in a P tag as well. All right. Another link, another kind of link that we're going to create is a link to another page that we have created. All right. And the assumption for now is going to be that it's in the same folder as our other pages. So I'm going to create a second page. just gonna uh, call the uh, page um, roster We can make it an unordered list if we want. And we can make up the names of the players. Probably would be a good couple of players to have on a community college basketball team. And then I'm not going to type in 12 players' names. I'm just going to put et cetera, you know, but you'd put in the rest of them. All right, so I'm going to save this as roster. Here's that page. Here's this page. If I want to link to them, if I want to link between those two pages, I can do that, again, with an A tag. All right? But it's going to be a little bit different of an A tag because, again, we're going to link not to a certain part of the same page or not to a different person's web page, but we're going to link to a different one of our web pages. So I'm going to go and edit this in Notepad, and I'm going to say... Here is the roster. A, href equals, assuming they're in the same folder, all I have to put in is the name of the page. So I saved it as roster.html. So I'm going to say A, href equals roster.html. So now when I save this and open it up, I can go to the roster simply by clicking that link. And it'll take me there. Now I probably should make a link going back to that page, right? So I'll go in on roster and I'll create a link semester if they're in different folders. You do, you, do, you do have to specify 
the, the relative path from one to the other. Uh, if any of you have had operating systems, CISS 125, you may have learned about relative paths where you do like folder name slash folder name slash folder name or you do dot dot slash folder name slash. It's the same idea as that, but we'll talk about that later. All right. So now I have links between those two pages. And this is a good idea to do. If you have a couple pages in your homework assignment, uh, make them so that there's links between them. So I can bring up one, any of them, any of the pages, and get to all the other pages. So now if I'm on the news page, I can click and go to the roster. If I'm on the roster page, I can go back to the news page. All right. Now again, the basic format of the links looks the same, right? The basic formats of the links is a href equals the text to click on and then the ending link. What's different about the different kinds of links is what we put as the href. We either put the full address of the website that we're going to, if it's someone else's web page. If it's our own web page, we just put in, provided it's in the same folder, we just put in the name of the page. We don't have to put anything else in. And if it's an ID, if it's a section of a page, we just do the pound sign. So pound sign and then the ID. There's one other kind of link that I want to talk about before I go to uh, the next section uh, of this. And that is um, the um, mail link, the email link. Now this won't work on this particular uh, machine because I don't think it has any email clients installed. But we'll talk about what it normally would do. If you put mail to colon and then the email address as the href, it will open up whatever email the person has on their machine and start an email for you. So all you have to do is, is finish it and click send. did it on the roster page. Email me for questions. So I click that. It's asking me what application I want to use this in. Uh, none of them are installed, so I'm going to just pick mail for the heck of it. And we'll see what it does. Yeah, it's asking me to add an account. All right. If you already had that application set up, it would open up and it would create an email to that email address, mzellers at lionccc.edu. Okay? So those are four different kinds of links. I mean, there's an occasion to use all of them. You can use the one to have links to just sections of the page, so it's kind of an index where you jump right to where you're interested in. There's a link for other people's web pages, there's a link for your own web pages, and then there's a link uh, for email. Now, if you look at a bunch of different web pages, you'll know that a lot of them have some stuff in common. All right? Let's pick some web pages. Go to ESPN.com, and you'll notice that. There's a banner that sort of tells you what page you're at. Waiting for this. This is sort of a navigation that allows you to go to different places on the site. 
Here's different articles or different sections of the home page. And finally, if you go way down to the bottom, joke's on me, you can't get to the bottom of this page. Let's go to Amazon. We'll see many of the same things. There's a banner on the top of the page that identifies where you're at. There's some navigation here that allows you to go to different places. There's some content and there's some sections for that content. Toys and games, books, clothing, and so on. And if you scroll down far enough, there's sort of a footer section at the bottom of the page. Go to LC's website. There's a banner that tells you where you are. There is some navigation that allows you to go to different places. There are sections that show you some information. And finally, if you go to the bottom of the page, there's a footer. A lot of web pages fit that sort of pattern. It's, it's pretty standard um, that web pages have that format of having sort of a header on the very top of the page. It lets you know where you are, what website you are at. Um, there's then a navigation that says, well, here's how you can get to different places on our site. Sometimes the navigation's along the top, sometimes the navigation's along the side. Could be either way. Sometimes there's more than one navigation. There might be a main navigation and a secondary navigation. Like, for example, here, if you go into, say, academic resources, there's still the navigation on the top, then there's another navigation over here. By navigation, I simply mean a list of links to other places that you can visit that they expect that you might be interested in. So, header, navigation, sections, and then finally, at the very bottom, a footer. All right? The footer usually has stuff that's important to be there, but not like of top importance where you want to shove it in people's faces. You just want it to be there if people, um, you know, think of, uh, of looking at it. Like, a lot of times you'll see someone's email address. All right? Yeah, there's a provide feedback. A link to our mobile app. A link to us on social media. An email link to, if you have uh, questions, how to contact us and some other things. So those four sections are very common on web pages. Sort of a header, a nav, a um, sections then, and then finally a footer. All right? So we're going to go in and add that to one of the pages that we created. And we're going to do that using some tags that are brand new in HTML5. All right? Prior to HTML5, if any of you did any web development or any web coding prior to HTML5, these tags didn't exist. There was one tag that was used called the div tag that was used sort of in place of all of these. And that was actually the problem. Uh, tags should have very specific meanings to do specific things. And there sort of was some problems with web development because you had this div tag that kind of did everything. It's much better when the tags are defined specifically to represent specific pieces of the page. So, the four tags that we're going to look at now are the header tag. Now, the header is different than the head tag. All right. Don't blame me. I, I didn't, wasn't the one that made these up. All right. But the header tag is sort of the banner on the top of the page. There might be an image in it, there might be the logo, there might be the search, uh, search uh, uh, bar, uh, there might be some text that says who the website is for, and so on. The navigation, then, is a series of links that allow you to navigate around. You then have sections of the page, and then finally you have a footer at the bottom. So I'm going to go and I'm going to add these tags to what I have now, just to show you what I mean. So there's a header. Oops.
Move by navigation. Here's a section. Could have a section. In this case, I have this news page, a section. Um, I could say there's a section about spring semester. So I could actually have several sections. More or less, this is going to be the content of the page. I could say this is another section. And then finally, another section that contains the standings. Now, when I do this, guess what? I'm not going to look any different. All right, it's going to look exactly the same as before. Well, you might say, why did I bother doing that? Why did I bother adding those tags if they don't really change the way it looks? It doesn't change the way it looks now, but it gives us the potential to use CSS to make the page customized to look any way that we want to. All right? Plus, it logically divides and logically describes the page. Remember, that's what you're doing with your tags. You're describing what the different pieces of content on your page mean. So these links together are the navigation section. So there's a tag that says this is a navigation section. The better that you can describe the page, the better the page is going to be. So navigation, uh, you, you put the navigation stuff in a nav tag, and then you put the other stuff in a uh, header tag, a footer tag, or a section tag. Now, I don't have a footer on this page, which is okay. You don't absolutely have to have a footer, but I'm going to go and add one on this page that will just simply be something like copyright 2018, let's say. So here's a page with all the sections on it. This is a header. This is a nav. Each one of these three things are sections, or four things are sections. And then finally, I have my footer on the bottom. So I've described each section of the page. And you're typically always going to have those sections. One thing that you can do is instead of a section tag, you can use an article tag. When do you use a section and when do you use an article? It really doesn't matter that much, all right? Uh, I would say use an article if it seems more like a newspaper or magazine article. Use a section if it's other stuff, all right? There's also what's called an aside. An aside is an article that's related to another article. An example of that is, uh, let's say there's an article about the Super Bowl coming up. All right, the main article is about the Super Bowl and the two teams in it, and the author's predictions of what's going to happen and so on. There might be an aside that talks about the new stadium, the stadium that's going to be played in Minnesota. It's related to the Super Bowl, but it's not sort of the main article about it. So if you have, some, if you have a piece of content that's like related to another piece of content, you can use an aside. All right? Now, if you notice, as I mentioned, this doesn't have any effect on the way the page looks. Not yet. Right? The default for these things are simply to make them what are called block tags. There's two kinds of tags in HTML. There are block and inline tags. Block tags stack up just like blocks stack up, like if you're playing Jenga or something. They stack up one on top of the other. All right? Inline tags is they appear next to, to the side of the tag before it. 
So for example, LIs are block tags, right? They stack up on top of each other. Here's one, here's the second one, here's the third one, here's the fourth one. This link is an inline tag, right? Because it doesn't appear on a separate line, it appears right alongside the last thing. So that's an inline tag. So all these tags, the header, the nav, the section, the article, the aside, and the footer are simply block tags. They're going to stack on top of each other. All right? And by default, they really don't make your page look any different, but they give you the opportunity to use CSS to make different sections of your page look different. All right? Why would you want to do that? Well, for a couple reasons. Number one, you want your pages to look attractive. All right? There's nothing wrong with this page the way it's written right now, except it's pretty boring. It's black and white, same font used everywhere. All right? Not terribly exciting. All right? The other thing that we can do is, if you notice, all the content sort of blends into everything else. It's hard to tell at a glance where one section begins and another section ends, where the header ends and the navigation begins, and so on and so forth. So you can use color and borders and other things like that to make it more visible that, hey, this is where the navigation is. Hey, this is where the one section is. This is where another section is, and so on. All right? So by default, that's what it looks like, but we're going to put some custom CSS code in that will allow us to change the way it looks so that we can help sort of color code the site for the user. All right? So I'm going to add some CSS code to this. All right? And we'll, we'll start this. And we'll get a little bit uh, into it, and we'll definitely pick it up big on Thursday. All right, the CSS code is going to be in the head section, just like the title is. Not the header, but the head section. And we put the CSS code, we can do this a couple different ways. This is the first way we're going to learn. We're then later on going to learn another way that's probably better. But the first way we're going to learn, we're going to put a style tag in the code. That tells the browser everything between the start and end style tag is not HTML. It's CSS code. Okay? With CSS code, I can change any of the visual attributes of the page. What do I mean by that? I mean anything. The positioning of things. How much space there is between things. The colors of things. Etc. Alright? We do that by creating what are called style rules. Style rules say, here's a, here's a portion of the page. This is what I want to do to it. So you define what gets a style rule, then you define the details of the style rule. So, let's work on just changing the background color of some things. I'm going to say background. No, no, I'm not going to say background. I'm going to say body. Then I'm going to say background colon gray. Semicolon. No. Okay. No. We'll see how this works in a minute. This, that's where you just put the rules. The rules apply to the entire page. Okay, but they belong in... But they belong in the head. Okay. Right. So, this is what's called the selector. It says what gets the style rule. 
In this case, what gets a style rule is the body of the page. In other words, that's going to be the whole page, right? Because everything that appears on the page is in the body. Included in these braces, or sort of curly brackets, is the style rule. We have an attribute, a colon, and a value. What do we want to change about the page? We want to change the background. What do we want to change it to? We want to change it to gray. Okay? Can't just make something up. There's a predefined list of things that you can change on the page. But I want to change the background of the page to gray. So now if I save that page and view it again, I'll get the whole page, but the background of it is gray. All right. I can also change the color of the text if I want to. And you do that by saying color white. And now the color of everything but the links is white. The links are, the, the links are their own special case. All right, we'll talk more about links later on. That's how I can change everything on the page. So I do that again. I give what's called a selector. That defines what gets the style rule. I then specify a style rule in that what is it about that thing that I want to change, and what do I want to change it to? What do you suppose this is going to do? What do you suppose that is going to do? Yes. Change the color? Exactly. This is a selector. This says what gets that style rule. These are the rules. The background of the header only is going to make blue. The text color is going to make black. So everything inside that header tag is going to be have a blue background and going to have black text. Yes? So is that just going to be like a blue highlight on the text? No, the, the actual background of the screen for that area will be blue and the text will be black. So if we were to look at this, it'll look like this. Now keep in mind, I'm not claiming that this is a well-designed and attractive web page. I'm demonstrating at this point. All right, We'll talk about getting nice colors that match probably next time. One last thing before we quit. If I do something like this, And again, I hope no one's colorblind in here. Is anyone colorblind? I have had students that are colorblind, which, which, you know, I can switch to other examples if that helps. But I could say, and again, let's make this really ugly, background red, color yellow. What is that going to make then? It's going to make H1s, and it's going to make all H1s have a background of red and a color of yellow. I only have the H1. Let's do it to H2 instead. So, my header is that color, and so on. Now, in principle, that's all CSS is. You give a selector. You identify what about the page you want to change, then you say what it is that you want to change about it. But there's a whole bunch of ways that you can mix and match different sorts of selectors and different sorts of style role to kind of achieve anything that you want. So this is just a basic introduction. Next time we'll get a little more into detail about all the things that you can do via CSS. All right? Keeping in mind, we're going to do this throughout the whole semester. All right, throughout the whole semester until like the last two weeks, we're going to be alternating, talking about a little bit of CSS, a little bit of HTML, and so on. All right, questions? Feel free to experiment with this, even though we haven't gone with this. It's not a requirement on any of your first two labs, but have some fun.
All right. Yes. Is our lab two ready to start now? It should be. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mike, if we wanted to apply some CSS code to our lab two assignment and turn it in that way, would that Absolutely. be an issue? No, okay. it's not an issue. And um, I uh, came up with. I know it's not due yet. Uh -huh. It's not due for a while, but uh, I started designing my web development projects, and so I wanted to show you. Okay.